Good morning, River Church. Good morning. I uh, I am excited to be here. Um, it's a good thing. Uh, Pastor Randy, he is uh, he's out of town, so Pastor Randy usually preaches uh, on Sundays, but he he uh, went on a family vacation this week, and and he asked me to preach, and so um, so yeah, I I, uh, I uh, said yes, obviously, and I'm just excited uh, to be up here. Um, he'll be traveling back, back home uh, this afternoon. So if you guys want to keep him in your prayers, I know I think he went up with uh, his wife and his younger children. So uh, yeah, just keep him in your prayers as he's traveling back. He'll be back next next Sunday. Um, one thing about about BBS, um, man, we've been working really hard for that, and it's been super exciting. And so uh, we. Like, like Betty was saying, we've just done so much work this year and we've made so many improvements in, in a bunch of different areas. And so we, uh, we set a goal for having 50 kids and uh, 50 kids show up. And last year we had, I think, 25, um, 24, 25 show up. And, uh, and when I was figuring out, okay, what, what are we gonna try and do this year? I, I, thought, about doing, I thought about doing 40. And uh, so was, that was our number. And, uh, someone who comes to our church, she did, had no idea about the number or anything like that. And she emailed me and she said, Billy, I hope 50 people come this year, 50 kids come. And I was like, why not, right? Let's do 50. And so when I first made this announcement two weeks ago at our VBS meeting, we had two kids registered, two or three kids. And uh, as of this morning, we have 24 kids. So that's awesome. Yeah, I'm super pumped. We are, yeah, we already have... Uh, we already have what we had last year, and so this last week, and you know how it is in, in, in Browns, everybody kind of waits, and so this is the week where we can kind of really push and push for those registrations, and hopefully we can hit, hit that number. So uh, there's invite cards in the back. Take one, give it to a friend, give it to a neighbor. Uh, if your children have friends, uh, just give them, give them to them, right? Go to the park. It's, it's, I guess it's debatable if it's good weather for the park or not, but um, it's, it's a little hot at times, but go to the park and pass out invites to kids and make sure you talk to their parents so you don't look real creepy. Uh, but uh, but uh, yeah, should be good. <clears throat> so that's all I want to say about VBS. We'll have that table in the back. And so just come by after service if you have any questions. Um, <laughs> So, so today we're going we're gonna to continue on this story in, in the book of Genesis. And if you've been with us for the past six months, uh, we've, been, we've been going through, through the, the story of Genesis. And today's story, uh, it's a big story. It's a story of Jacob and Esau, and, and, and they're finally going to, to meet face to face. And so, um, so it's, it's an exciting story. It'll be in Genesis uh, chapter 23. Um, but b before we jump in, I want to tell you guys uh, a little story about myself. <clears throat> now, those of you guys who know me, uh, you know that I don't, I don't ever talk about this stuff uh, very rarely, right? Um, and so I played, I played uh, college football, right? I was born and raised in Brownsville. Uh, I went, had the opportunity to go play college football at the University of Illinois. Um, and so I was up there for four years and, uh, man, it was, you know, being a, a kid from Brownsville, you know, going up to play in, uh, in that, at that level as part, part of the big 10, uh, we, we got to play schools like Ohio state and, and, uh, Purdue and, and Michigan and Michigan state, like those big, those big names. And so, uh, man, it was awesome. Like you got to go in stadiums that I never thought I'd ever walk into you got to be around dudes who go on to play in the nfl um, you got to be around uh, just the traveling and being in planes and going from here to there and uh, man it was it was really nice um so yeah i was i was a part of that it was really cool but um but during my time there and i was talking to my wife about this last night during my time there i was uh, i didn't know the lord i wasn't walking with jesus and and I was very much the way the way Jacob is. Very his, Jacob's name means that he is deceitful, right? Like that was that was me. And so I have I spent four years at Illinois, and, and I met a lot of people 
and, and I was around a lot of people, but I don't have any lasting, like lasting friendships, right? <clears throat> um, I treated, I treated people poorly. Um, I was, yeah, I was a jerk, uh, and so kind of, kind of like the way the way J Jacob was. If you've uh, been following along, just very selfish, very inward thinking, very about himself, and that was me. And so um, last year, so when, when I was at Illinois, we went to uh, went my last year there, we went to the Rose Bowl, which is in California, and that was that was pretty cool. But they had this reunion uh, last last summer, about a year ago, and. Uh, and it, it, I got an invitation to go out there and and and, and go be, I guess, recognized or, or whatever it was, and and I didn't and I and I didn't go, and uh, I had all these reasons why not to go. Right, I'm pretty busy here, and we were getting ready for VBS last year, and all all of, all of these things. But but also in the back of my mind was, man, I'm gonna see a bunch of people that I don't. I, I didn't leave on good terms with, and so so I didn't go, and and uh, and then I saw, of course, my friends. They posted pictures and whatnot, and uh, on Facebook, and man, I just saw a bunch of faces. Like, man, it'd be cool to see that guy. Man, I really treated that guy poorly, and and whatnot, and so so I didn't I didn't get to go, and 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 at some point, you know, it, it was an awesome experience. At some point, I want to be able to go back, and I want to be able to maybe the twenty year reunion, I'll I'll go back or whatever. But but I, I missed out on that opportunity, right? Because there there was some uh, some some tension some tension left, and so uh, today we're going to talk about that. Um, we're going to talk about that. <clears throat> So the, today's sermon is titled uh, "Reconciliation with God and with Others." So as I said, it's, it follows the story of Jacob and Esau, right? Um, now before we, we jump into this passage, I want to kind of recap who Jacob and Esau are. Okay, um, so so who who is Jacob and Esau? So they're, they're, they're twin twin brothers, right? They they don't look the same, uh, but they were twin brothers, and and the scripture says inside the womb they were always fighting against each other, right? Um, and 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 their mother was was tripping, Rebecca was tripping, and she, she was like, "Why are they doing this, Lord?" And and God said, "You know, the younger child is going to rule over uh, the older child, right?" And so. Esau was born first, right? These two brothers, Jacob and Esau. Uh, Esau was born first. Randy talked about this last week. Uh, uh, he, he was a hairy baby. He was a, a red, hairy baby. Uh, and Jacob was a, a smooth, uh, smooth baby, very different than his brother. And when they were born, Jacob was, 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 was holding on to Esau's heel, right? As they came out, he was holding on uh, to Esau's, Esau's, Esau's leg. And this, this seems to describe the, the nature of Jacob, right? He, as we see through his life, he wanted what was, what was going to be given to Esau. He wanted the blessings. He wanted to be first, right? <clears throat> so he's holding on to his brother's legs. Um, uh, Jacob goes through his life believing that God is not who God says he is and, and God won't do what, what he says he'll do. And so as we look at this passage, as we, as we look at Jacob's life, or, 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 or when they were born, God said that the younger will rule, he, he will rule over the older, the, the older will serve him, right? He, he will get this blessing, but, but Jacob didn't believe that. He lives his whole life not believing that, right? He wanted to be born first, Okay, and his whole life is chasing is chasing this this uh, this position uh, of being of being the one who will be blessed, right? Um, as the boys get older, uh, Esau, the, there's this one encounter where Esau is hunting. All right, he's, he's out, he's out, he's hunting, he's doing what he's doing in, in the in, in, with just just hunting, and he comes back and he's like spent, and he's he thinks he's about to die, and he tells his brother, hey, hey, brother, his brother Jacob was cooking. He's like, hey, Jacob, give me some food, and Jacob says, I'll give you some food if you give me your birthright, right? So of course Esau agrees, and 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 Jacob obtains his birthright, and 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 then Esau is angry, he's bitter at his brother because of this. <clears throat> Selfish. Instead of helping out his brother, he's, he takes that from him. 
right? Shortly after that, uh, in this in this in this pursuit of of grasping uh, this inheritance that was promised to his brother, uh, we 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 hear that that Isaac. Isaac is their father. He's, he's about to die, or he feels like he's about to die. And uh, he says, let me bless my, my children. So or let me bless my son Esau. And so uh, there's this whole deal where he tells Esau to do some stuff and, and, and then come back and he will, he will bless them. And during this time, uh, Jacob, Jacob tricks his father into thinking that he is actually Esau, right? So he puts, he puts hair uh, on his arms, he puts hair on his neck, he wears Esau's clothes, then he goes in front of his, his dad and he receives the blessing that Esau should have received, right? Esau comes back after he had done what his dad had told him to do, finds out that he's not going to be blessed because his dad was just tricked into blessing Jacob, and he's furious. He's angry. He says, when mom and dad die, I'm, I'm, you're, you're, you're next. Or I'm going to kill you after that. Uh, and so Jacob's terrified. He's like, man, I don't, I'm not trying to die. And so Jacob, Jacob flees, right? He leaves. <clears throat> but but the, last thing that Esau, the last thing that Esau said to him is, I'm going to kill you. You're going to die. Right? And so Jacob flees, and as far as I'm concerned, Jacob has like no intention of ever seeing Esau again. Right? If someone tells me they're going to kill me, I'm like, all right, man, I will probably never see you again for the rest of my life because I don't want to die. And so uh, I, I believe that, that when Esau left, or when Jacob left and he fled uh, away from Esau, as far as I'm concerned, he, he had no intention of ever seeing him again. Right? He was probably hoping that he would move away or, or be killed or whatever, but he left with no intention of ever seeing Esau again in his life. Right? And so, so Jacob flees, and he flees for about a 20-year a period. Now, he's not on the run for 20 years, but uh, his mom told him, you know what, your brother wants to kill you. Go chill. Go hang out with my parents, and, uh, and, and they'll, they'll take care of you. And so, so Jacob goes, and he, uh, he gets married. He, he marries. Uh, he works for his, what was soon to be his father-in-law. He marries Leah, and he marries uh, Rachel. He's tricked into marrying Leah, and then he marries Rachel, and then he works for uh, his life, uh, for the accumulation of, of a bunch of livestock, a bunch of animals. And so um, dur during this 20-year period, Jacob, because of this, Jacob grows a family, right? He grows this, this really uh, large number of, of descendants, and he, he grows this huge amount of, of livestock, and so the Lord is blessing him in growing, growing his family. And after about, after about 20 years of this, after about 20 years, uh, Jake, Jacob's father-in-law is starting not to like him so much anymore, right? <clears throat> um, and he says, and, and so he wants to leave, and God says, okay, it's time for you to go back and, and meet Esau, right? <laughs> The guy that wants to kill you. It's time for you to go back to your to your family's house and meet meet, meet up with your brother. And so Jacob, Jacob goes. He goes. He's probably scared out of his mind, terrified. Uh, but he goes, right? And so on his way back to meet his brother, he he's absolutely terrified and remember the last thing his brother said he wanted to do was was kill him right and so he sends he starts sending his animals out in front he's like man hopefully let me just send him all these gifts and if i send him enough gifts hopefully he, he won't be angry at me anymore and so he sends out all of these animals okay and and it's, it's in this walk back towards uh esau this re the reunion reuniting with esau that we start to see Jacob finally acting in obedience, finally believing who God is. We're not going to project it, but Genesis chapter 32, verses 9 through 11, this is Jacob talking. He says, And Jacob said, O God of my father Abraham, 
and God of my father Isaac. Now, this is the first time he's, he's addressed God in, in those terms, right? O Lord, who said to me, return to your country and your kindred, that I may do you good. And verse 10 says, I am not worthy of the least of all the deeds of steadfast love and the faithfulness that you have shown your servant. So all this stuff that I've accumulated, he's saying, I don't deserve it. Now, this is a change in Jacob's attitude, right? We see earlier, Jacob wants everything for himself. He is trying to con people into receiving things. And he, he develops this, this multitude of people, right? Uh, when he fled out from Esau, he was by himself. He was alone. And over the past 20 years, he has this huge family. He has this huge livestock. And he says, I don't, I don't deserve any of this stuff change in his attitude. It says, for with my staff I crossed this Jordan and now I have become two camps. So please deliver me from the hand of my brother, from the hand of Esau, for I fear him that he may come and attack me. The mothers with the children. He's going to come and wipe us all out. I'm scared. Verse 12, he says, but you said I will surely do you good and make your offspring as the sand of the sea, which cannot be numbered. This really beautiful picture of, of Jacob acting in faith. Man, I don't know what's going to happen, Lord. I'm tripping out. But you said to do this, and you said that you were going to do this one thing. I believe you. Right? And so from here, he sends uh, his entire family ahead of him. And, and remains behind in the camp. And this is what we talked about last week, uh, where Jacob actually wrestles with God. Remember, Pastor Randy talked about wrestling with God and walking uh, with a limp, right? And that's where we find ourselves today. Jacob just wrestled with God and is now, he now has all of these women and children and all of this livestock, okay? And the last thing his brother said to him was, I'm gonna kill you. And God told him, you need to go meet your brother. Right? And so he's on his way back to meet, to face, face his brother, right? <clears throat> and by the way, Esau, he's, uh, he's coming to meet Jacob, and he's got 400 men with him, right? So if I'm Jacob, man, I'm like, okay, I got that cow. Like, what the heck's that going to do? <laughs> and I have all of these people, women and children. Man, I don't stand. He's got 400 men. This dude's coming to wipe me out, right? Remember the last thing he said, last thing he said to him was, I'm going to kill you. And that, that's where we find ourselves today in Genesis uh, chapter 33 verses 1 through 11. We'll project that. <clears throat> it says, and Jacob lifted his eyes and looked and behold, Esau was coming and 400 men with him. <laughs> so he divided the children among Leah and Rachel, his two wives, and the two female servants. Right? And he put the servants with their children in the front, closest to Esau. Right? And he put the servant, uh, and, and then Leah with her children, and then last, Rachel and Joseph. Uh, Rachel and Joseph last of all. Verse 3, this is really cool. He himself went on before them. The change in his attitude, right? He was scared. Now he says, I'm going to go out in front. Right? He, he himself went on before them, bowing himself to the ground seven times until he came near to his brother. Verse 4 it says, But Esau ran to meet him and embraced him and fell on his neck and kissed him, and they wept. And when Esau lifted up his eyes and saw the woman and children, he said, Who are these with you? And Jacob said, The children whom God has graciously given your servant. Then the servants drew near, they and their children, and bowed down. Leah likewise and her children drew near and bowed down. And last, Joseph and Rachel drew near, and they bowed down. 
verse 8. Esau said, what do you mean by all this company that I met? What do you mean by all these animals, all this company that you sent before uh, that I have just encountered? What do you mean by all this company that I met? And Jacob answered, to find favor in the sight of my Lord. But Esau said, I have enough, my brother. Keep what you have for yourself. It's really cool here, guys. Uh, we see Jacob was constantly trying to take his birth, uh, Esau's birthright, steal what was, ble- uh, what was to be given to Esau, and now he's addressing himself as his servant. So he's in some way honoring uh, Jacob's birthright. Uh, I'm sorry, uh, honoring Esau's birthright. And, 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 and verse 10, Jacob said, No, please, <clears throat> if I have found favor uh, in your sight, then accept my present from my hand. For I have seen your face, which is like seeing the face of God, and you have accepted me. Verse 7, please accept my blessing that is brought to you, because God has dealt graciously with me, and because I have enough. Thus he urged him, and he took it. Man. <laughs> I was not, not expecting that to happen, right? I was expecting a slaughterhouse, right? These 400 men, I was expecting uh, total chaos. Uh, but, but we had this beautiful, beautiful reunion. It's really sweet. Um, in our culture, in our culture, we, we have a hard time talking about our problems. We hate, we hate discussing difficult things, right? Uh, we get mad and like you, you don't talk for like a week and like nobody talks about anything, right? And then like a week later, like everything's cool again, like nothing happened, right? Um, like that, that's, that's the culture that we live. That's the culture that, 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 I, that, that I am. That's the way that, that I like to be. Like whenever Lisa and I are mad at each other, I'm like, all right, I just won't talk to you anymore. I can do this. Um, <clears throat> it's never good, but that's, it's so easy to do that, right? Tend to live that way. Talking about our issues. There's a story that when I was uh, researching this uh, for this sermon, I was doing doing some stuff, and I came across this story, and it was really cool. And it, it's talking talking about bearing the hatchet, right? Bearing the hatchet with a family member or old friend. It says, I know family members that haven't talked to a brother or sister in 30 years. One's in bad health and will probably die soon. So, so, so just a little bit of context. This was people who were, or towards the end of their life, some reflections that they had. Right? One's in bad health and will probably die soon. But neither he nor the other brother will make an effort. They both have written each other off. And there's, there's blame on both sides. But these were two guys that were inseparable as kids. They got washed in a bucket in their parents' kitchen sink together. I just think of my, my two sons, man. Now, neither one will make, an, uh, make a move to improve things because they think they've tried and the other one is too stubborn. They think they've done all they can and they've washed their hands of their relationship. And they'll, they'll regret that when one of them is, is no longer around. This is, this is hard stuff, guys. Hard stuff. And, and as I said earlier, I, I know this is the culture that we live in too. I was, I, I, so I'm a high school teacher and uh, I teach speech. <clears throat> and, um, and so uh, part of the, 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 the course, some of the stuff we talk about is reconciliation, right? Forgiving others in, in the workplace and whatnot. And, and I always ask my students, because I'm super curious about this stuff, but I always say like, how many of y'all fight and then you just like don't talk. I know we've talked about this story, but you just don't talk for a week. And my kids, yes, sir, that's exactly how it is in my house. Yes, sir, that's how my that's how my dad is, or that's how my mom is. And so, man, this is super this is super relatable to us also. So what I want to do this morning is I want to look at our passage. Uh, 
Genesis 33. Um, and I want, want to look, I think there's a good blueprint here. I want to look at how to approach these situations. Man, I, I, I know personally speaking uh, from the story that I shared with you guys uh, during my time at Illinois, man, I had some good friends up there and I treated them poorly and I miss those friendships and I miss those people. And I want, I do want a way to, uh, to, to approach those people. So we'll look at that. The, the first thing I want us to look at is, uh, is, is to have reconciliation with God. <clears throat> The most important relationship uh, to reconcile is, is the one between you and God. As, as we saw from this story, uh, Jacob is constantly trying to pursue these things that he, he, he feels it will make him most satisfied. And he, he pursues everything except God. And nothing, nothing works, right? He's holding on to his brother's foot so he could have been pull, maybe pull him back in so he could have been born first right it's really cool in, in Jacob's life uh, we, we see him holding on to two people we see him holding on to his brother right I want the blessing that this guy is going to receive and then when he wrestles God when God's about to leave he holds on to him too and says you're the only person who can bless me please bless me Whatever you're pursuing to fill the void in your life, if it's, if it's not Jesus, then, then you will continue to strive in vain. If you don't believe me, uh, read the book of Ecclesiastes. Man, King Solomon, uh, he had everything. Like, he was one of the richest dudes, smartest dudes. I mean, he was like, like, the, like a Mark Zuckerberg, although he didn't invent Facebook. But he... Uh, he had all, like resource. He could basically do whatever he wanted. He had the money, the, the power, the influence to do whatever he wanted to do. And, and he wrote the book of Ecclesiastes. And in that book, he says, man, everything is vanity. Everything under the sun is vanity. It's not going to give you what you're looking for. The good news is, the good news is, is that Jesus already paid the price for reconciliation. You are being pursued, right? For God so loved the world, like God loves you. He loves you. He died for you. Even if you do not believe in him, he loves you and he died for you. And he is pursuing you. Think on that. Get that relationship right. Get that relationship squared away. I was talking to a friend of mine recently, and, and he was saying, no, Billy, like, I've, I've kind of been playing with God the past few years. I mean, I've been coming to church off and on, and, you know, when, when I sit in the, the audience, I just kind of sit, but I'm not really engaging. He's like, man, life is too short. I, I, I need to sort this one relationship out in my life. I would encourage you guys to do the same. Sort that out. Sort that out. The second thing is, is reconciliation with others. <clears throat> we'll talk briefly about this. We're going to come back to this in just a little bit. But in this story, we see Jacob finally take courage right, in reconciling with Esau. Uh, he was probably nervous, but he goes in front, right? Verse 3 said he went in front. He goes ahead to meet Esau. He is, he is reconciling uh, uh, his relationship with his brother. Right? God calls us to love the Lord with all your heart, mind, uh, and soul, and lo love your na neighbor as yourself, right? So he's, he's already got his, uh, his, 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 he's, he's working on his relationship with, with God. He is pursuing him. And now he's like, man, I got I to gotta pursue, gotta pursue others. The, the, next, the next point is faith and action. So 
one of the main, so faith and action, right? One of the, one of the main themes in the book of Genesis is acting on your faith. So it's not just having faith, but acting accordingly, right? We see it all throughout Genesis. We're going to continue to see it as we go through Genesis, right? We see it in, in Adam and Eve. God, now, now they didn't act in their faith. They did the opposite, right? God told them to do something and they said, you know what? God, you're not all you're hyped up to be. I'm going to do my own thing, right? And what happened? Sin kicked out the garden, right? Um, that's a negative example. Uh, but, but this is a constant theme. Next we see Noah building a boat, right? God tells Noah, hey, hey, Noah, there's going to be a flood. It's going to be crazy. And Noah's like, I never seen, like it's never rained. What are you talking about a flood, right? Uh, but, 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 but God said something. Noah believed, and so his faith was, 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 was shown because of his actions. He built a boat, right? Abraham sacrificing Isaac. Right? Abraham is waiting forever to have a kid. Uh, he's, I think he's 100 when he finally has Isaac. Right? He's waiting such a long time, and then he has Isaac, and, and God says, you know what, you need, a, you need to sacrifice him. Right? And so Abraham's like, all right, man, I'll do it. Don't, I, I, I trust you. And so we see, uh, we see Abraham take Isaac to, to, to sacrifice him. Right? Uh, when he's about to, of course, the Lord stops the whole deal. But his actions showed what he had believed. Right? Isaac, which is Jacob and Esau's father, he had repeatedly been showing faith, right? Uh, <clears throat> he was the one that was on the altar. He's like, okay, like, Dad, I believe you, so like, we'll, we'll figure this out, right? Um, he, 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 he needed faith uh, in finding a wife, right? That was a hard deal for him, for, 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 for having children, right? All of these things were hard for Isaac, and yet, he showed his faith by his actions. And then here we see, we see Jacob going back to meet Esau. Right. Ultimately, faith is, these are questions I want us to ask ourselves. Ultimately, faith is, do you believe God is who he says he is? And do you believe he'll do what he'll say, say he'll do? So the first one, I want to break those up into two. The first one is, do I believe God is who he says he is? Right? Is, is he, the, is he the, the almighty God? Is he the creator of all things that we see in, in the earlier chapters of Genesis? Right? Do I believe that he is the God of Israel? Do I believe that he is, uh, is our God? Do I believe that he is the same today? Uh, yesterday and forever. Do I believe that our God is not changing? Do I believe these things about God? There, there's many other, but that's just uh, a short list, right? Do I, be, do I believe God is who he says he is? And, and the second one is, do, 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 do you believe that God will do what he says he will do? And again, this list is long, but uh, uh, you can find many examples in Scripture. But, but do you believe that he's going to comfort you, that he's going to go with you, that he's never going to leave you, that he's never going to uh, forsake you? Do you believe that Jesus is going to provide for your needs? Do you believe these things? Do I believe God is who he says he is, and do I believe God will do what he says he will do? And then the, the last question is, actually there's two more questions, but the, but the last part of this, this the, these series of questions is, is I'm, am, am I living that out? Am I acting that way? Right? Faith requires action. Now it's not about your actions. Uh, uh, your actions do not save you. You can't. You're, we don't have a, a. If I just do enough good things, and the Lord's going to love me. Like that's that's not what I'm saying. But what I'm saying is is that if you believe something, you will act accordingly. Right? If I love my wife, man, I'm going to act like I love her. James two says, "Faith without works is dead." Now, if, if you believe God is who he says he is, and you believe that God will do what he'll say he'll do, then there are many ways that we could live that out. 
you're, you're, uh, uh, you could be a good, a good, good husband, right? A good father, right? You could do your best at, at work. You could. Um, uh, uh, First Timothy has the qualifications of an elder, and I like to say that those are basically the qualifications of a, of, of of any Christian, right? Be self-controlled. Um, and get all, all, that whole list. <clears throat> Am I living those things out? Now, now here's, here's where I, I want to end today. And this is what I'm going to encourage us to do. I want us to ask ourselves this question. What is one relationship that you need to reconcile? Just, just one. What is one, rec- uh, one relationship that you need to bring peace to? Christ is, has reconciled us to God, and now we are, we are agents of reconciliation. Now, now we are about uh, reconciling others to God. We're about uh, we, uh, hopefully restoring other people's, uh, aiding other people in their restoration, uh, their relationship uh, with God, right? The second Corinthians says, uh, all of this is from God who through Christ reconciled us to himself and gave us the ministry of reconciliation. That is in Christ, God was reconciling the world to himself, not counting their trespasses against them and entrusting to us the message of reconciliation, right? So to reconcile, to bring back together, right? Matthew 5, 9, it says, blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the sons of God. So reconciling, bringing peace, right? And then Hebrews 12, 14 says, strive for peace with everyone. So, so I want us to think, who is that one, that one relationship? What is that one relationship that you need to reconcile? What is that one relationship, man, where, where you need to reconcile, you were wrong, and, or you may, the other person may have been wrong, but you're just going to pursue that person, Right. Share the gospel with them. Okay. We'll, we'll, uh, so, so I'm telling you this, right? I'm telling you guys, uh, I, I want us to do this. But you're probably thinking, how? How am I going to? How am I going to do this? And, and I say, let's let's follow Jacob's example. All right. First thing is to trust the Lord. Trust the Lord is who he is, and he'll do what he says he's going to do. Second thing is take take the lead. Right? You initiate the conversation. Right? You, you may have treated someone poorly or someone may have treated you poorly. You initiate the conversation. Okay, Billy, I, I, I can do that. Like, I trust the Lord. You know, I can take, I can take the lead, but... Man, I don't, I don't know what to say. What am I going to say, right? <clears throat> say something like Jacob said. All right, Jacob referred to God, right? He, 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 he talked about how good God was. He talked about God sparing his life. He started talking about, man, these are all the things that God has done for me. Say something like, hey, man, I just wanted to reach out to you and apologize to you. Or I just wanted to, 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 to tell you that, man, I know that we've had our issues and I know that you've been avoiding me and, and we're at the mall and I see you. You walk that way and I walk this way. <laughs> um, and I, I don't want that for our relationship. I don't want that for our friendship. I care too much about you. Man, I'm speaking to myself right now. I'm, this week, Lise, wherever my wife is, may going to have to support me because I'm going to have a lot of tough conversations. Um, but yeah, I miss those friends. They were, they were good people. They are good friends, and I miss them. And I want to reconcile our relationship, and I want them to know uh, just the work that Jesus has been doing in my heart. I would encourage you guys. I mean, I'm... I'm I don't even want to ask you guys. Y'all probably already have someone in your head, but but just think, what relationship could I reconcile this week? Let's pray.